The investigation team found their tent, but it was torn. Someone had torn the cloth of the tent from inside because its threads were sticking out. It seemed that the hikers present inside had torn the tent and ran away out of fear. Some footprints also seen were the marks of shoes and bare feet printed in the snow. Hikers' camera and some strange photographs were also found in it. But despite complete criminal investigation photographs and daily entries in the register, this case has not been solved for the last 65 years. This is the story of the Mountain of the Dead, and this incident is remembered by the name of Dyatlov Pass Incident. On the morning of January 23, 1959, 10 people of the hiking team took the train and set out towards the Ural mountain range of Siberia. This group consisted of eight boys and two girls, in which Igor Detlov was their group leader. They kept a register with them in which moment-by-moment -moment information was being written. During the train's journey, group leader Igor Detlev made an entry in the register, the translation of which is I wonder what waits us in this trip, what will we encounter? For the next few days, the group traveled on train, bus, truck and horse and at last they start walking and skiing to move forward. On 28 th January, one hiker named Yuri Yudin became sick and decided to turn back while the other nine hikers continued on the plane. These are photos of the moment Yuri was separated from his nine companions but who knows that this was his last get-together with other members. The group of nine people continued their journey in the snowy valleys, and by using diaries and camera they started documenting all the moments. Through photographs and register entries what they had written, till now everything is looking absolutely normal. On February 1st, they reached the bottom of a mountain which is known by the local people as the Mountain of the Dead. They spent the whole day climbing that mountain and decide to set the camp near the top of the mountain. These are the last few pictures that were found from their camera and the last entry in the register at the same time. The translation of last register is, can't imagine such comfort in the ridge, with a sharp wind, hundred of km away from any human settlement. Everything that happened till now was found written in his register, but no one knows what happened after that. This expedition was to take a total of 16 days. They had left behind telling their friends and family members that after come, come back down, and they will inform them through telegraph. Trouble was increasing for his relatives and friends, as it's on 16 days as 15 days had passed, but there was no news of group leader Detlef, or any other group member. Finally on February 26, a group of volunteer act as a team and they succeeded in searching for the lost hike camp at the base of the mountain. Looking at this camp, it was not difficult to guess that something had definitely gone horribly wrong. The tent was covered with a thin layer of snow, and the equipment for the hike inside it was in perfect condition, but the fabric of the tent was torn from the inside with the help of a knife. It was felt that perhaps something went wrong inside the tent which forced them to tear the tent and run away. The next day they started searching for the hickers. Some footprints were printed in the snow near the opening of the torn tent, which was going down the mountain, In these footprints, some were of shoes and some were of bare feet. Let us tell you here that by walking in a relaxed manner, the footprints are almost formed and here also the investigation team had not to look for a long steps but normal steps. Footprints were seen printed in the snow for about 500 meters, but after that they disappeared somewhere, maybe the subsequent snow had hidden them. The investigation team continued to move forward in the direction of these footprints, and after a while, they reached a pine tree where they found signs of an extinguished bun fire, and also found the frozen dead bodies of Yuri Krivenshenko and Yuri Doroshenko. It took next two months to find out the bodies of nine hikers. First two hikes was wearing very little clothing. They had no jackets, no pants, gloves, hat, shoes, nor anything that one would wear in such cold weather to protect himself from the cold. They only had light shirts and underpants. When they looked at the weather archive, it was found that when they died, the temperature here was around minus 30 degrees Celsius, but their clothes were like those worn in the summer season. But why was this so? Some strange marks were also found on the nearby tree. Its branches were broken up to 5 meters, as if they had tried to climb it in the dark of night to save their lives. The bodies of the next three hikers were also found buried in the snow between the tent and the tree. In comparison to the previous two, they were found in slightly warmer clothes, but they too not wearing shoes and gloves. These three hikers were directed towards the tent, as if they were going from the forest towards the tent. But in the midway, they lost courage and died midway. 
Some wounds were found on their bodies, but the doctors said that the cause of death of these five was hypothermia, that is condition in which all the body heat is lost due to cold for a long time. The bodies of the last four hikers were recovered from under a rock in the forest. Their exact location was 75 meters in the opposite direction from that same tree. Three of them suffered serious injuries. The head of one was cracked and the ribs of two were broken. The medical examiner is of the opinion that such injuries could not have been caused by a human or animal attack. He believes that they fell from a high place. Animal attack is used because the eyes of two of them were out and the girl's tongue was missing. The most surprising thing was that two t-shirts and a pant found from the crime scene had radioactive material on them. Investigation was going on with the understanding that perhaps someone had killed them or they had been murdered, but on May 28, this criminal case was closed because there was no evidence to show that they had been murdered or that they had committed suicide. Then what actually happened to these nine people? What is the meaning of leaving the door of the tent and tearing it down? Was there such an emergency that everyone had to tear the tent with a knife and come out? Whatever this emergency was it ended as soon as they came out of the tent because there were no trace of their footsteps to run away. That is, the danger that was in the tent disappeared as soon as they came out and they started walking relaxed. According to the official report, six out of nine hikers died due to hypothermia. But looking at his condition, it was difficult to believe that they had died due to cold. Till now, this case had received international coverage. Family members and many other people started raising their voice against the hypothermia story of the Soviet Union. They believed that the Soviet government was hiding the real reason by covering up the death of Hickers, especially when radioactive particles were found in three clothes, everyone's attention turned towards nuclear testing. It was the era of Cold War and just a few years ago, America had shown the world a glimpse of its power by dropping nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After that, the Soviet Union had also started doing many nuclear tests. People thought that the Soviet Union has secretly conducted a nuclear test on this mountain, due to which nine hikers have lost their lives due to radiation and now they want to hush up the case by blaming hypothermia. The investigation team was looking at this case from different angles. On one occasion, Avalanche was also blamed as the reason for this accident. It is possible that if they had felt an avalanche during the night, then everyone left the tent and ran away. But the theory of avalanche could not be digested because if the avalanche had come, then the thin layer of snow that covered the tent would have been a very thick layer. Secondly, the group leader Igor Dietlin was an experienced hiker and skier. He would not have pitched a tent in a place where there was a danger of avalanche. After this accident, more than 100 expeditions took place, but no one had seen anything like this here which could cause avalanche. Yes, dangerous conditions were definitely experienced on this mountain. That too in the months of April, and may because the snow is melting then, whereas these nine hikers went in February when there were no such conditions. This is the last photo taken by the hikers, which was taken on the same night when this accident happened. It seems that this is a photo of some light which the camera lens could not focus properly in the dark. Due to this, a new theory began to emerge. Some people believe that it could be some unidentified flying object in the sky. On the other hand, some people told that it can be the emergency light which placed on the tent, or it can be photo of candle light now. Whether that thing on image is rocket, UFO, or metro, one thing is fixed that there is nothing fall near to them. If it was so, then when dead bodies can be found inside the snow, why was the debris of the crash not found? The real reality of this last photo could never be revealed, then our real question is still the same. What is the real reality of the accident at Dialog Pass? Why did they tear the tent from inside? And how some hikers suffered dangerous injuries? Why they were wearing such thin clothes, even in such cold, when all of them were experienced hikers? To know the truth, we turn to the tent which is actually the first link in the chain. If seen in the photo taken a night or two earlier, then we can see the exhaust pipe is coming out of the tent. This exhaust pipe and the stove kept inside was made by group leader Detlef himself. They had also used this stove on the night of the accident because it was inside the tent and cooked food was also found in the tent. It is possible that when the exhaust pipe was closed, due to some burning coals remaining in it, the fire suddenly flared up again. When the tent was found, 
It did not have an exhaust pipe. That means if there was a fire, then instead of coming out, the smoke was accumulating inside due to the stickers present inside started suffocating. This is the only reason why they could not control the smoke, and they immediately tore the tent and came out. Evidence is also present to prove this theory because burn marks have been found on the body and clothes of Hickers and blood was also coming out from the mouth of some of them. Let us tell you here that, one of the reason of blood coming with cough, is to inhale too much unfiltered smoke. After coming out, they walked comfortably and started looking for a shelter. Some hikers came out of the tent without warm clothes. They already knew a place for the shelter, that is why they went under the trees and after reaching there they started a bonfire there, whose extinguished coals along with the tree were found by the investment team. For hikers who were wearing more clothes, they went a little deeper into the forest to search for wood on the rock there. A small avalanche was triggered, and they fell off the cliff into the rocks below. Due to this fall they suffering life-threatening injuries including a cracked head, broken ribs, and internal bleeding in their chest. The two hikers, who were wearing less clothing, fell into the pine trees. The remaining three hikers who want to return back to the tent got exhausted and froze while climbing back towards the tent, while the two hikers sitting near the bonfire also froze and died due to the extinguished fire. Talking about radioactive particles, let us tell you that everything is a little radioactive, but these clothes were more radioactive than necessary. A member of the group, Alexander Kalabali, worked in a nuclear facility, and George Krivanshank worked in a top-secret Soviet nuclear production plant. The radioactive clothes found belonged to these two hikers only, whereas radioactive elements were found in normal quantity from the clothes of everyone else, and those hikers whose body parts were missing may have been injured when they were fighting for their lives. But it may have been attacked by wild animals. Today, 65 years have passed since this accident. Out of the group of 10 members, only Yuri Yudin was left, who left the expedition due to illness. He died a natural death at the age of 76 years on April 27, 2013. I hope you all will like and share this video. Thank you very much for your loving comments. See you in the next great video.